Uh, hey there YouTube, Travis and Will here again, and you've probably noticed a lack of Motobicon videos uh, on my YouTube channel, which is because I passed along my Moby project onto Will, who finished it and turned it into an awesome bike, and uh, he kind of likes these a lot more than I do, and I don't like them at all, so <laughs> that, that says a lot. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain because they're beautiful bikes and they can be made to go so fast, but they've got a pretty steep learning curve, and I thought it'd be kind of fun to kind of break down in one video, kind of like the big Motobicon annoyances. So I guess the very first frustrating part are these Gertner carburetors. Now on the yellow one, that one got a Delorto 1412, which is actually the pretty popular swap to do for these things. But I never really realized the full extent as to nah, why they're so frustrating until you tore into one. Yeah, and first of all, to preface this, um. I have three mostly complete Gertners, and I could only get one working carb out of all three. This one, somebody just bashed the place where the choke slide goes, so I can't put the choke slide in there. This one, someone's, I, I don't know. I, I just, <laughs> the point is I don't know what happened, but they're not. These, both of these bodies are not really usable. There's a couple other things going on with this, not just this nick, but the atomizer stuck in there, and believe me, I've tried to get it out. So that's the thing, unlike a uh, pook, Bing, uh, these atomizers are pressed in? Yeah, on the, on the older, especially, I'm not sure about the older 12 millimeters, but definitely the older 10s, you can screw off the jet, which I could do for you, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, you take off the jet, and the atomizer, you can't, there's nothing to screw off. It's actually pressed in. You need to take, you know, a thin punch or something and just tap it out from the bottom. Wow. And on, on this one, actually, this is a little newer, and this is a 12 millimeter. There's a brass retaining ring on the bottom of the atomizer. Oh. And then, theoretically, you could maybe slide it out, but sometimes you still have to tap it out anyway. And speaking of jets, there's only two jets available? As far as I'm aware, yeah. There's the slow jet and there's the fast jet. The slow jet, um, you can see it says K80, which I'm not really sure what that means. Someone like you know, Myron's Mopeds or Rebel Moby or someone might know what that actually means. Um, and then there's a 58 jet. Okay. Um, hmm. which is the fast jet. <laughs> Interesting. Very interesting. But yeah, I can see why these are so annoying, and the fact that they're untunable makes most people kind of just chuck them immediately for a 1412. Yeah. So. Oh, and let me, real quick, one more thing. The float level, you just have this needle stuck through this plastic float. If you want to adjust the float level, you got to slide this plastic float up and down on the needle. Oh, no. You can't just do it by hand, though. You really got to get... And you also got to be gentle with this little brass needle. <laughs> you got to hold this plastic float and get some pliers and gently pull it. Mm. Either way to adjust the float level. Wow. Yeah, you're crazy, man, trying to fix these. <laughs> and again, I love the design of these things. And there are some really cool features. For example, the gas cap, which when you screw it off all the way, has a little like dipstick thing so you can sort of see how much gas you have. I don't have very much. <laughs> There's a lot of cool, like really innovative, like design style things on these bikes. But one thing I just really can't get past are these square furniture style bolts. Here's one on the throttle mm. right here. Square end. Same with the ends of the brake cables if you want to bring the cam. Well, we replaced that one, didn't we? No, we no. didn't. It's on the other end. Okay. Um, there's a square headed here. Let me bring that around. There you can see it. Yes. Those are everywhere. But you can't really on put a cable. You can't really put a wrench on, and it's just little frustrating stuff like that. Just kind of adds up. Again, this thing's absolutely beautiful, and I love these long seats, and I love the speedo design, and just everything about it, but this model of things like that are extremely annoying. Alright, now on the motor side, uh, as far as the electrical is concerned, you always have to fiddle with these so much to get spark. So I think one of the big common problems is the coil, which they said that you called the Navi coil. Yeah, um, the ignition coil 
This one hasn't been done any favors because it's obviously been sitting outside. But in general, though, still, these coils are bad. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, this one's just cracked and just a mess. Yeah, that's the big sign, right? And there's yeah, a crack in there, there's probably. It's cracked. This one is the only, um, Moby coil that I've still seen working on this wow. bike. But you can see... I've got a condenser wired up here, mm -hmm. and this is actually also a vintage, a vintage. This is Moto Bacon condenser. This is also the only good Moto Bacon condenser I've ever found. <laughs> you can see actually on this bike, they used to be they used to be mounted under the flywheel, which would get really hot, and those would almost always fail. Right. This one is still in a pretty dumb spot. It's behind the flywheel. Where it's just exposed to like any array of you know water, salt, whatever, yeah, and it still gets pretty hot. Right. This this is bad. Um, this condenser here, and I just haven't taken it off yet. Sure. I wired in this condenser up here. Sure. I've noticed all these ground straps are always just this like exposed. Yup. Wire. Because <sighs> the engine pivots and it's got these rubber mounts that's isolated from the frame. Mm -hmm. So you need to run a grounding strap from the motor to the frame. Makes sense. Or, I'm sorry, from the motor to the coil. So uh, the coil's grounded. Interesting. But the ignition system on these is always a nightmare. I've never gotten a Moby that sparked. Right off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's pretty incredible. I even remember on the yellow one, like the ignition points were bad and like you cleaned them 10 ways to Sunday and like they just weren't like, they wouldn't work, you had to replace yep. them. That's just, that's just crazy annoyance right there. Well, that's all YouTube. I just kind of want to record a little short, little rant about these things. I mean, they are beautiful bikes. Will owns three, that one, the yellow one, which we'll take out here in a little bit and do an update video on because that one's so awesome. And then your really good one over there, <laughs> the one that's getting the frame off restoration. Yeah. Um, no, I gave up on that one. I tried that. It's really one of the good parts. Oh, yeah. Especially because... Oh, yeah. Look at that clutch bell. That's probably not reusable. <laughs> no. Always... Although the, the motor on the yellow one, granted, was not that bad. Right. But it was close. <laughs> and we saved it. Yeah. And it's running today, and you'll see it. That's awesome. All right there, YouTube. Well, until next time.